Hi guys, welcome back to another Impact and Influence series with the team at Regrowth. Today we have got Fiona Gibbs with us from Bob Berry Real Estate in Dubbo. How are you, Fiona? Well, thanks, Kylie. Thanks for having me. What's happening out in Dubbo? Well, it's a beautiful sunny day in Dubbo, um, and it's certainly all happening out here, which is great. Now you're one of the directors at Bob Berry Real Estate um, institution. I'm sure everybody has heard of the Bob Berry name in New South Wales, if not Australasia. Um, and you and a couple of the other directors bought the business from Bob. How many years ago now? Uh, nearly six years ago. Yep. And how long have you been with the business there in Dubbo, Fiona? I started working for Bob in 2010, so 12 years. You don't look old enough. You look so good. Too kind. <laughs> And um, what, uh, what's your functionality within the business? So I work in the property management department, have done ever since I started with Bob. Um, so yeah, everything property management is, um, yeah, what I do. So you oversee the, the PM team and... Um... Shana Chapman, one of the other directors, oversees the property management team as a whole. Um, and I work, day to day, I sort of work as a property manager, basically doing normal property manager things, um, yeah, but work with Shana. Great. So um, recently I went out and had some time with your team and we sort of did, I guess, a kickstart, you would call it, and, and worked through quite a lot in the day. It was a fabulous day. I had a great time and, and I couldn't believe the growth in Dubbo. You and I got chatting about, um, I guess, regional trends and growth and the migration from particularly uh, metropolitan Sydney and some other areas off the back of COVID. And mm. you shared with me, I guess, some numbers and intel um, that you've been working in the business. And that probably prompted today's conversation. But before we go into that, could you just give anyone that's kind of listening or watching a bit of an overview of um, what your business looks like, but all in, um, importantly, the local Dubbo area and region, um, population and how many rental properties and all that sort of thing. So over to you. Yeah, sure. I mean. Dubbo is obviously a big regional centre. We service and always have done sort of the greater western New South Wales. Um, we're pretty fortunate now that Dubbo is getting a new hospital. Um, we have a cancer centre as well. Uh, look, very big reg uh, rural impact in Dubbo uh, has done for a very long time. We've got a big regional sale yards. Um, agriculture is certainly a really big part of Dubbo and Dubbo's history. Um, moving forward into today, um, and like I said, we've got a new hospital, which is either finished or nearly finished being built. So that's brought a lot of people to Dubbo uh, to, for the build. And also moving forward, it's enabled us to have more specialists, therefore more people coming to town. Um, we've also got a lot of other infrastructure builds at the moment in regards to uh, some rail networks and those types of things. So Dubbo certainly changed from yeah, being predominantly agriculturally fed into the city uh, to have some big infrastructure spends. And we're also about to see uh, some more, a, a lot closer impact from some local mines, which are sort of in the process of coming together in the hopefully short term. There's, there's plenty going on out there. And I noticed when um, when you guys very kindly drove me back to the airport that there'd been a really big development in the main street with some residential units. How many were in that block that were built? So there are 70 units. It's a multi-storey building. It's a first for Dubbo. Um, we were really excited to be part of that. Um, it's modern living, I guess, overlooking the Macquarie River and the CBD of Dubbo. So hopefully it sort of provides, well, there's a big hole in our market, I suppose, for that type of accommodation. Um, it's going to be great for the professionals who are here the Monday to Friday, uh, just want to come in, have easy living, low care, and then fly out to the city if that's what they like. All these people who like to live in the CBD and have that sort of more city lifestyle, which I think is, it's, it's going to be great for Dubbo. I think it's, Dubbo's ready for that type of living. And I guess too, you know, growing up in the bush, you know, mum and dad don't want to retire to, to Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane. And if they want to, you know, get it, get something that's um, lower maintenance and convenience, and as you say, in the middle of town, it's closer. What else is there? Well, that's right. There's nothing like this. the building that's going up. It's um, certainly one of a kind. And look, I think it's it's, it's definitely going to be great for Dubbo. And as you say, it saves yeah the everyone leaving town, I guess. It gives people options, which is what people are looking for these days. In their I think it's interesting, kind of a good, good segue into, I, I guess, the pillar of our conversation, which is around 
market trends and growth and, and returns is that is that particular building is um, two and three betters in there. And I was actually surprised at the rents um, when I was talking to Jane and we're driving to the airport and I was like, wow, did not expect that. So do, do you want to give us some insights into some of that data that you've been watching and, and how Dubbo is performing? And if I'm looking to invest in your area, what I could sort of expect to um, achieve? Yeah, sure. So as of December, the median house price in Dubbo hit $455,000, which is, it, it's big money for a regional town. Um, so if you sort of use the 455... That's right, everyone knows that we're doing this live. It's all good. Keep going. We just roll with it. It's all good. Uh, $455,000 for a median house. Um, the median rental price for a three bedroom sits at $398 a week in Dubbo. So that gives you a return on investment of about four and a half percent in today's market. So it's they're pretty they're good numbers. And I mean $455,000 is affordable too. It's not we're not talking Sydney prices, obviously. So the mum and dad investors can sort of if I it's probably an achievable sort of price range perhaps. Yeah, and I think, look, you, you certainly know there's a lot of investors in Sydney that like to be getting that on there. And I know it's all around capital growth and all those sort of things, but I looked at some figures with your team and I was out there last time. Some areas of Dubbo were up, you know, 20, 25%. Some areas of Dubbo were up 45%. So, you know, it was really interesting to see the growth. And how's that compared to some of the other, um, you know, the big fives in New South Wales or some of the other bigger regional cities or towns? Yeah, so rent-wise Dubbo's sort of, we hold our own at the moment. We're probably going ahead of some other areas. Uh, for example, in the three-bedroom market, Orange sits at 475 a week, so they're above us. They always have been. Um, but Tamworth, for a three-bedy, the median rent there sits at $363. So we're sort of in between those two. Multiple, prob multiple different reasons, you know, how we sort of sit in the middle. Obviously, we've had a lot of growth. Um, but, yeah, look, there's sort of two other regional centres which are probably – offer similar sort of facilities. Orange has probably had more of a mining influence for a longer time than we have in Dubbo. So they've yeah. always been ahead of us. Thanks for giving us that contest around market. And I, I'll probably shoot something here and Fiona go, we did not prep for that, Kylie. Um, it's really interested in your leadership journey. Um, you know, there's there's three or four of you, direct four directors there in your business, four directors. And obviously, you've been with the business for a long time, um, evolved personally. Um, what are some of the things your biggest learnings from leadership been? Well, I, I guess that you've always got to keep learning, I suppose, um, is probably the biggest thing you sort of, we've learned, and particularly with COVID, we got a pretty big shove to increase our technology use. And that's probably something that I'm a bit hesitant with or slow, I suppose, in the uptake. I'm always asking the girls, can they fix something on my phone? Um, but look, I think, yeah, my leadership journey is probably, it's a definitely an ongoing thing and I've certainly got a lot to learn. Um, we've got a great team and obviously Bob has certainly set a pretty high standard um, for us coming into the business to sort of, yeah, he leads by example. And I think that's probably the one thing that I aspire to do is lead by example. So something I noticed when I was out there last time, you are, as a company as a whole, and the team even all knew their numbers really well, is knowing knowing about your data, knowing about your numbers and how that drives decisions of your, your clients. How do you use that in practicality or, you know, week by week or in your meetings? And how do you use that to make informed decisions in your business? Yeah, for sure. So I guess... The, the rental figures for us, they're a really important part of our property management. We all know the figures. We publish them quarterly in our property management report, which goes out to all our owners once a month. I mean, Bob's been sending the property report out since 1989. Um, so it's sort of, it's something that everyone, all our owners are expecting to get. They're expecting to see the numbers. And when we come to doing our rent reviews, it's, this is really what we our base as to where we sort of form our decisions from uh, just to sort of protect our owners and make sure we're doing the right thing by everyone to make sure that the statistics that we have are based on rental bonds lodged so it's actual data of what's happening in the market it's not the advertised price it's not versus what they actually got um, it's actually what went on the rental bond form so it's actually what happened and I think it's important to sort of 
convey that information with our owners um, and obviously that our staff have a really good understanding of what the prices are in Dubbo. And I think that's incredibly important. You said a couple of things there that I always bang on about. Everyone's like, here she goes again on client experience. Consistency. I mean, you've been doing that since the 80s. So yep. your clients have become to expect it. And I think something that we do in real estate that we're not great at, if we get a really good idea or have a great brain explosion after we've been to a conference or we've heard that somebody else is doing something and then we stop doing it or we don't do it consistently. So I think that was the first one. Second one is the value that that must add to your clients to make informed decisions, but mm. also the value it adds to your team when they must be trying to have an impactful or influential conversation with your customer around what's going on in the market, the decisions that they should make, and the accessibility of that. So does that does that go out to your clients, what, in the form of a, a newsletter or is it comms text? How do you send that out? Yeah, so... We've actually just moved to it being um, in an email format. I mean, well, sorry, it's been emailed for a while, but uh, we've sort of moved to a more modern um, online type of newsletter. Um, so it goes out monthly, but prior to that, and we still do, I must admit, print quite a portion that do go out in the post. Uh, people- Is that because your customer's asking for that? Yes, yeah, so we still have a portion of our clients who like to have their end of month statement posted out to them, uh, you know, hand on a bit of paper, something to hold, something to have. Um, it's yeah, it's it's pretty important to a lot of our owners that they still get that uh, that communication by post, um, whether that's how they do their bookkeeping or whether it's you know, just, you know, a personality thing, but it's certainly um, yeah, something that goes out monthly. Haven't missed one. I'm sure Bob's never missed one. Uh, so look, it's it's definitely really important, and and they expect it, as you say, it's it's coming at the end of month every every time. And I think you know, importantly, it's what the customer wants. The customer decides. So if they want yep. it on email, send it on email. If they want a hard copy, make sure they've they've got it in hard copy. Um, you've been in property management a long time now, and that is a key functionality for you within the business, besides being a a director. What are the things that you've probably seen change the most in a positive note that you would share things that you've done that you think, oh, that was a really good win. We should have done that years ago. Or that was something I didn't know you could do that you would share with anyone listening today that they might unpack and have a quick win in their business. I think our biggest thing is to embrace technology. We we really need to, and, and we're, sort of, we're getting better at it, move forward. Um, yeah, don't. Don't wait to do the new software or to get the new app. Um, I think it's really important to, and, you want to think, and I suppose the thing is don't be afraid to stop it if it doesn't work. Like if it's not working for us um, and for our clients and our staff, um, change. There's no harm in trying something. You don't have to hang on to it, right? And yeah, it's exactly. interesting because um, traditionally, and I'm not saying this as always, but traditionally property managers hate change. And yep. so it's interesting for you to say that, um, you know, I don't like change and I don't like technology, but ultimately you have to adopt those things. Is there yeah. one platform or one piece of technology that you wish you'd implemented quicker? Oh, look, we made a change from console to property tree, which is a big thing as anyone in property management would know. It, it is a really big thing. Um, we found it to be a really positive change. Um, it's sort of, it's much easier and much more flexible, but I think Probably the on the ground things like our condition reports and our routine inspections, getting that into an app as opposed to heading out with your clipboard and a bag of keys, I think it's, yeah, it, it was certainly a, a, a big game changer for us was to making it more, it just so much easier. You press sync and it all comes together, technology willing, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think that that's definitely the, the day to day stuff, the on the ground stuff has really helped us. Yeah. What in Property Tree have you liked the best? I think the communication. We can send things through Property Tree. Um, our, our client, our end of month statements are clearer. I sort of find uh, it's, and then it obviously it, you know enables us to send bulk communications, which is something that we sort of really didn't do until we made the move to Property Tree. Uh, reaching out to a lot of people and also our tenants as well at Christmas time. We write to all our tenants at Christmas time saying, look, we're closed. And again, that's something that they have an expectation to receive. And we all, I mean, most people get it on your phone these days, don't you? It's like, oh, I've, I can't remember who the emergency plumber was, but I can just find that email from Bob Berry Real Estate. 
and there's my emergency plumber. I don't have to call my property manager who is hopefully relaxing. It sort of makes it, um, yeah, it's, it's made communication easier, I think. And just um, to, to wrap in the time that we've got left, we, we've spoken about, I guess, market intel, what you're providing the customer with, how you're providing, um, improving the customer experience and how you've embraced technology and the, and the changes that's made to your life and, and time and efficiency is, is I'm just curious, where are the investors from, from Dubbo coming from or are they local or what are you seeing? Look, it's, it's a vast array of people. I think predominantly our, our investors have been local or regional people um, in saying that we do obviously have uh, city-based investors. I mean, we, Bob's had clients that have been with him for over 40 years. Um, our older clients are predominantly rural-based, but look, um, we have clients from probably nearly every state in the country. Um, whether that be they've moved there, started from Dubbo, all sorts of things. So we've got a Dubbo's got a pretty diverse range of a group of people now. I suppose the community has certainly changed a lot. What's the population? Forty thousand. Forty thousand and your surrounding areas. I'm assuming bring you to. And for for people listening, whereabouts is it? Dubbo, Central West New South Wales. Um, sort of, uh, we'd be six hours drive from Dubbo, um, from Sydney rather, or an hour on the plane. Um, but look, we, I suppose we're sort of the most western major regional centre before you head right out and get into, uh, you know, more remote and, and much smaller towns than Dubbo with less services. Yeah. And Fiona, to finish on, um, what advice would you give to a director or a property manager li listening that could they could change something in their day to day to have better impact and influence on their team and or their customer? Look, I, it comes back to technology again. I think for us, I think really it's yeah, implement technology and go with what works for you and for your team. I think it's important that if you've got a happy team everything sort of flows a lot more easily. Um, you've got to be yeah, open to change. As you said, we're quite resistant to change, but yeah, open to change and listen to what everyone has to say, I think is important too, so that you're taking on board what other people have to say before you make a decision or make a change. Really interesting. You said two things there. You said implementation of technology, not just adopting it, because that's yeah. the number one problem I see is people, um, oh, we've got to have that. It's shiny and new and we've got to have it. And then the implementation plan is in incredibly poor and then you don't get good take up. Then it's bad for your internal customer. And you said you've got to keep your team happy. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that's important because if your team's happy and your team are passionate about what they do and they've got all the tools and resources, then everything else will look after themselves and then they'll look after your customer, the external customer. Um, if anyone would like to reach out to you and ask you any other questions around some of your incredible data, um, how do they find you, Fiona? Yeah, so obviously Bobberry Real Estate, our number is 6882-6822. And thank you so much for joining us today. 20 minutes just flew absolutely like that. Really appreciate your time and sharing with us some of that data that you've been keeping over the years. No worries. Thanks very much, Kylie. All right. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.